If you wish to make upward or downward saccades, the brain signal must travel from cerebral gaze centers in both cerebral hemispheres down to the midbrain where vertical eye movements are organized. From there, separate pathways carry the signal for upward and downward saccades. If you are shifting your gaze to a target you see in your peripheral field, the signal goes from the eyes to the primary visual cortex. From there, it connects to occipital, parietal, and frontal regions in both hemispheres. If you are looking vertically toward a target you do not see, the signal originates in frontal gaze centers and connects to parieto-occipital gaze centers in both hemispheres. The signal then travels from both cerebral hemispheres down to the superior colliculus in the midbrain and then on to a nucleus with an impossibly long name, the rostral interstitial nucleus of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. We will abbreviate that to RIMLF. The RIMLF connects to the interstitial nucleus of Cajal, or INC. More about the INC later. To complete upward eye movement, the signals from both RIMLFs burst across the posterior commissure and travel caudally to the superior rectus and inferior oblique subnuclei of the third cranial nerve. These nuclei send the burst signal out to the superior rectus and inferior oblique muscles to drive the eyes upward. For downward eye movement, the signal takes a different brainstem path. It goes ventrally through the tegmental midbrain to the inferior rectus and superior oblique nuclei. Those nuclei send the signal out to the superior oblique and inferior rectus muscles to move the eyes downward. Now back to the interstitial nucleus of Cajal, or INC. Just as there is a pontomedullary circuit that keeps the eyes in side gaze, there is a circuit to keep the eyes in upward or downward gaze. That circuit connects the RIMLF to the INC. The two INCs feed back through the RIMLFs to provide a sustained impulse that maintains vertically eccentric gaze. Damage to these vertical saccadic pathways can occur in many places. A lesion in the cerebral gaze centers or their descending pathways in both cerebral hemispheres produces impaired upward and downward vertical saccades. But because the brainstem vestibulo-ocular reflex pathway is intact, you will find that the patient's eyes move in a direction opposite to that of head movement in the oculocephalic maneuver. This impairment of volitional eye movements and sparing of vestibulo-ocular eye movements is called a vertical supranuclear gaze palsy. A common cause is progressive supranuclear palsy, and here is an example. Now look to your right, and now left, and now straight ahead, and now up, without, without turning your head up, good, now all the way down, okay. And now I'm going to ask you to follow my light. Watch my light here. Keep your eye right on the light. Follow the light. Good. Okay, follow the light. Follow the light. Okay, now follow it up. Up, 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 up. Okay, and all the way down. Down, 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 down. Okay, now watch my light. Very carefully. I'm going to turn your head this way so you can watch my, watch my light. Selective damage to the thalamus, dorsal midbrain, or posterior commissure will disrupt upward saccades and may even cause down gaze deviation called sunset eyes. In some patients, look for a dramatic eye movement called convergence retraction. Watch the eyes in this patient with a pineal tumor. This patient has a pineal tumor that is compressing his dorsal midbrain. He complains that looking upward makes his eyes ache. When he tries to look up, his eyes do not move up properly. Actually, they move backwards.
you can elicit this clonic retraction with an optokinetic strip. When the strip is moved upward, his eyes develop a normal jerk nystagmus. But when the strip is moved downward, the eyes jerk backward. You can see this better by looking from the side. Such retraction eye movements result from co-contraction of all extraocular muscles. It is blamed on neural miswiring in the dorsal midbrain. Selective damage to the tegmental midbrain disrupts downward saccades and may even cause upgaze deviation. Take a look at this patient who has a subtle disturbance of downgaze. This patient can move her eyes properly from side to side. She can also move them upward, but when she attempts to move them downward, the eyes move slowly and incompletely. This is downgaze paresis, caused by a lesion in the tegmentum of the midbrain. She suffered a stroke.